So then here on my app, uh, I'm going to go back to now the home screen. So what does this icon look like for people? It doesn't look like a calligraphy pen to you? Mm -hmm. The, the <laughs> nib of a calligraphy pen? Yeah, it does. Yeah. So these different icons have different meanings to different people. All right, so I have followed one account, Maxine, and now what I'm seeing on my home screen is I'm seeing all her stuff. I'm not following anyone else, so it's just all her stuff. So that's the idea about when you follow an account, you're going to see their content. The more accounts that you follow, the more stuff will be there, the more it might seem overwhelming. So that's why you might want to think about only following accounts really important to your business, because it's always what's, what's in it for my business, how do I use this for my business. So home screen shows you shows the posts of those you follow and your own. Your own posts will be mixed in here as well. But if you don't post very often, their stuff will overtake your stuff. And you'll be able to see your stuff all the time by just going back to your own profile view. What you also do from the home screen, you have a few things to do. Let's talk now about the uh, from left to right top menu. Victor? Yes. When you just said their stuff overtakes our stuff, could you expand on that? Well, the more of what they post will push down your stuff out of the way. On, on my own page. On your home screen. home screen, but not on your own, uh, not on your own profile on the home screen. So what the public would see, would my stuff would go down low? Nope, it's just about uh, from your point of view. Oh, when oh, you're oh. logged in on your own home screen, your stuff will be moved down. That's okay. So here now from the home screen, we can look at the top menu bar. There's stuff on the top over here. Now I'm sure it has a certain name, but there's a camera on the top left here. I'll call this one the special camera because then there's the regular camera. Special camera. This one lets you share a lot of a lot of different things. We'll look at it in a moment. That's different actually from the one down here. This is another way to share, but this is the regular camera, I might say. It doesn't even look like a camera. On some well, on Android it doesn't, but I think on iPhone it does. Yeah, it still has a plus. It still has a plus. Okay. Well, uh, it used to be a camera. Uh, down here. So this is the regular camera, then there's a special camera. We'll go into details in a moment. Then uh, there's the Instagram logo on the top, and then there's a little paper airplane again. And then that one's a little bit different than that one's a little bit different than the other paper air paper airplane. This one is direct messages. This is send private messages to your con contact to your followers so below each photo is a little paper airplane and then here on the home screen there's another one they're both about sending people private messages in in a certain kind of way but the one below a person's photo is that I'm gonna take their photo and I'm gonna share it to my connections this one is sort of starting a new conversation a new direct message text, photos, whatever. And here, as soon as I go to this screen, it's saying, send disappearing photos and videos. Photos and videos disappear after they're watched. Um, that's the special camera, which is now down here. So I'll get back to that one in a moment. But direct messaging. Send private photos, videos, and messages to a friend or a group. So if I want to communicate with people one-on-one -on -one or in a group that I have a connection with, I can go to the paper airplane on the top right corner. I guess the big difference is that below each photo is a little white paper airplane, and then on the top right corner is a black paper airplane, and they have slightly different... It's the same, they're the same ones in the They're the same, they look exactly the same. Yeah, they're the same. They do? Uh -huh. Oh, okay. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So the one below the photo has one slightly different purpose and the one at the very top another purpose. 
So you could use that one direct messaging to communicate with people one on one. And then moving on, moving back. Okay. So back on the top menu, you have the special camera. If I if I click on the special camera, uh, I'm gonna take some photos or something. Does it allow Instagram to take photos and video? Well, yes, because I, I can't really share anything unless I allow that permission, so <coughs> do that one. Allow Instagram to record audio. If, if I'm going to do a video, yes, I want, I want audio. You can deny some of these, but it doesn't behave as well. So I'll allow them all. So what I get here first is I get the selfie camera, and then there I am right there. Uh, there's the various icons here. For example, flip it over. And that's the other camera back camera. I can turn on flash. So there's a little flash icon, that will flash. And the first icon on the left over here. Then I can load up photos from my library. Recent photos and such. Actually, these are recent photos that I've already taken on Instagram. You have all these icons that don't explain themselves unless you play with them. The happy face one. Let's check out the happy face one. So I'm going to flip the camera around and then, okay, I'm going to take a picture of myself, but I'm going to turn on the happy face icon. So, what that lets me do is rip off Snapchat where I'm going to select cool little filters for my face. So, I'm going to select the um, sunglasses. So, then look at that, I'm suddenly cool. <laughs> <laughs> and then it might tell me the message tilt your head back. Now I have a. Look at Turn it on or off. Okay, let's do another one. Uh, what does this one do over here? <laughs> Find a friend who wants to be my friend. So this is really cool, and it was great the first time I saw it on Snapchat. Right. <laughs> so this is just filters about like selfie filters to be really cool. Oh, this is the one everyone loves over here. These little animal ears. So do you see this? <laughs> do you see this one all the time here? So animal ears, tap your eyes. Cat ears, dog ears, you know, I see so many dog-eared photos nowadays that when you see someone without the dog ears, you're like, what's wrong with you? Where are your dog ears? <laughs> so that's that little happy face. I'm sure it has an official name. I don't remember what it's called. But that's what that one does right there. It, it puts filters on your face. And what's the value in that for a business? Obviously, it's fun, but what's the value of it for a business? Anyone have an idea, maybe? Well, if it's super cute, then a lot of people might like it. Yeah. It could get you attention. Mm -hmm. uh, it could get you, it could go viral, etc. Mm -hmm. you, you, never, you never know. So all of these things, they may look fun, frivolous, and all of that, but maybe there's a way we can figure it out for the business. Maybe we take photos of the people in the business. Maybe every Friday we'll do a selfie Friday, and then we're putting ourselves out there as the business. Look at us. We're fun and hire us, whatever. Um, so that's one of the things that could be shared. Getting dizzy, Victor. Oops, let me, let me put it down right there. So then at the very bottom, you see we've got normal. OK, yeah, whatever, this is normal. So take photos. Um, you can also do video. If you press that one time, it takes one photo. If you press and hold it, it takes a video. So if I have it pointed somewhere and I press and hold it, this is recording a video. So see, there's a little timer happening right there. My voice is recording. And wherever I'm pointing the camera, that's going to be a video. Mm. There, my voice is recording. And wherever I'm pointing the camera, that's going to There, my voice is recording. And wherever I'm OK, so that was normal. Now then there's these extra ones, Boomerang and Rewind. And these are going to be extra apps that it will ask you to download. There's one called Boomerang, there's one called Rewind. So what Boomerang does is it creates a little animation, a couple of seconds of animation. 
that, that go back and forth, like a boomerang, I guess. So if someone is walking in the door, I can record them in boomerang mode. They're going to walk in. It's only going to be like two seconds. And then the video will automatically reverse itself. So the person will be walking in, walking out, walking in, walking out. Mm -hmm. So that's another sort of thing to figure out. How can I use this to, uh, for my business? Maybe taking a bite out of a food, out of something, and the bite comes back. You know, just whatever creativity to catch people's attention. Mm -hmm. Because now photos are so passe, video is so passe. I want dog ears <laughs> on my photo, and I want my animation to flip back and forth over and over. So. Whatever. So how do we, once we, once we have a good photo that we really like, mm -hmm. could you actually save it to your, your um, app as a JPEG? And yes, personal yes, because the, detail, uh, the default, remember when we were in options a while ago, the default was also save photo. So I was saying there that when you take the photo, it'll go to Instagram and it will also get a copy onto your phone, so you can use it for something else. Right to our phone library? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We've got Boomerang, we've got Rewind, um, Play Videos in Reverse. Great. Then we've got Hands Free. So in this one, you can turn it on and then put the phone down and record and all of that. All the way to the left is the new, the new hot one. All of those other ones are passe now. Here's the hot one. Live. So live is all my zero followers would watch me live right now. So when I have more followers, they would see me live. Um, that one I can find a lot of uses for, like a live Q&A &A session. Let people know throughout the week or throughout the month or whatever, this Friday Q&A session, <coughs> come on to Instagram, join us. And you'll be talking to your followers. You can show them the front camera, the back camera, whatever. Uh, like let's say I'm a realtor. I want to use Instagram for realty. So I'm taking photos of the properties. I'm um, taking short videos of the properties, and then I'm posting out that this Friday I'm going to answer questions. If you've got questions about real, real estate, uh, join me on Friday. So it's just another way to get more attention and activity, and people can comment, and you get follows from your efforts and all of that. It's just another way of marketing, right? It was a flyer on, on, on a post. It was a billboard. It was a radio ad, a TV ad. Now it's a photo or a live stream or a, a, or a fun filter. It's just another way of marketing. And on the surface, it can look very juvenile, but it, it, it works. Depending on your audience, you could really reach your audience. So all of that is from that special camera. I'm going to go back. Is that a special ad? No, it's all built into the device. It's all built into the app. I believe all of the things that you do from the special camera, that's the stuff that lasts the 24 hours. So when I was over on this other screen and it says, and it said, try the 24 hour thing. This is from the direct message screen. Camera, that's the same going to the camera that was the special camera. So this is further the Snapchat borrowing that what you put in there is part of that 24-hour disappearance. Can we save it? Some of the things, yes. Like the photos, yes. Uh, the video, I'm not sure. I, 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 don't, I don't think so. I know that, for example, their competitor of live uh, Periscope, that one does save it. When you do your live broadcast, it does save it to your device. I'm not exactly sure if the Instagram live stuff gets saved to the device. So I showed I showed the um, special camera first. Now when we look at the regular camera, it might look really boring. The regular camera right here. I press that one. I get that I can either load a photo from the gallery, the items on the device. I can take a photo. I can create a video. So let's say I'm in the photo first. 
I'm going to take a photo, a very artistic photo of my water right here. <laughs> I pressed the shutter button and then I crashed it. Aww. Let me try that again. Instagram. I'm surprised it didn't crash on the other ones when it crashed on a regular photo. <laughs> Okay, so I, I took a photo, and then I get all of these filters. This is classic Instagram, square photo filter. This is the default with no filter. I can go to all of these that just have some sort of random name, but then an effect. So if you look at them carefully, you see, you know, the black level is different, the saturation, I can go to, f here's, here it is in black and white, it's, there's various black and whites. This one is called Moon, and then there's Reyes, Juno, etc. It don't even I don't even don't even memorize their names. It's just like what's the effect? And some of them are very subtle, and some of them are not. And I remember throughout the years of Instagram, as they do different filters, I sort of remember that the older filters were more interesting. These one, a lot of them are like very faded and not that interesting. And I remember older filters were very different and weird. And, uh, no, possibly. They have the really weird stuff. Yes. So here's Willow and Inkwell, just different versions of black and white. So what was also useful is well, I can I can start with a built-in filter, or I can uh, also add Lux. Which is this top, uh, this top little sun? Oftentimes, what works really well is to activate this top, um, this top icon, Lux. And what that does is it kind of brightens things up, and you can slide that over, and it might look a little nicer. Well, all of these filters are built in; they've mixed certain effects. You have your own way to make your own infinite number of effects. This is the part that can be very fun. So I take a photo, and instead of using one of these pre-made filters, I can go to Edit. And then I have the ability to make so many changes. For example, Adjust, which could be to rotate it, to crop it, all of that stuff. I can go to Brightness and Contrast. Let's say I go to Brightness. I'll increase Brightness. As I'm making the change of any of these filters, I can then tap and hold the photo for a moment, and it shows me before and after. When I let it go, it goes back to after. Uh, how does it look? 57 versus 79 versus 80. I can tap and hold it and see the, the before and the after. So if I like the change, I can click Done. And I can stack all of these changes. I can keep adding all of these changes. Like, OK, I want to increase contrast. Bring up contrast. I want to add warmth. Application is low on memory. What else? I'm going to add saturation. So I can go into all of these and build them up. And there, and there it is before, and there it is after. So you have all of these effects that you can do manually. And one of the ones that's very popular, very fun, is you can do tilt shift. Right now, this subject is in focus and a lot of other things. With tilt shift, I can make one thing in sharp focus and other things out of focus. It's very popular to focus on your product so that you don't see the clutter around it. So let's check it out right here under tilt shift. I can go there. And we have two ways to do this. Radial, it's like a spotlight, a place will be in focus, everything out of focus. Or linear is a sort of an area in a line is in focus. So if I activate radial, 
see how there was like a spotlight that was put let me do that again a spotlight appeared in the center that's what's in focus and that spotlight I can actually drag it around and select where the focus will be so if I put it up on the drinking area that's more in focus and everything is out of focus that circle that spotlight I can actually also grow it or shrink it so with two fingers the pinch or the unpinch I can uh, make the circle bigger make the circle smaller So there I am making a very small focus area and moving the focus right there focused area is right at the rim of the cup and then everything else is out of focus linear gradient linear uh, blur if we click that one you see how a, a line a horizontal line was made so everything in that horizontal line is in focus and everything's out of focus and that can also be rotated and grown so I can tap and hold it and move it or with two fingers I can rotate it so in this case perhaps a vertical linear blur would be better to focus it I can tap and pinch and make it smaller focus vertically here and everything else is out of focus depending on the photo the effect could be very very nice if there's background stuff to blur away um, you really can see it if if everything is in if there's not much background then there's not much to blur Yeah, if you put your focus in the right spot, it looks like it's miniature. So I added a bunch of effects. I think I created something more interesting than the pre-made effect. I'm click Next. Mm -hmm. And then it says, OK, write a caption. Would you like to add a location? Would you like to tag people? Would you also like to send it to another network? This, this, this caption, this description, this is what helps you get found. When someone goes to that search screen and searches for cookies, you took a photo of a cookie, but it's not smart enough to know that it's a photo of a cookie. So you have to write something in the caption that explains what it is. You can write complete sentences, you can write simple keywords or hashtags. You know, what's, what's common is that people just write, you know, hashtag, art hashtag cup hashtag for sale whatever they, they just write a bunch of hashtags um, that's a way to do it although it looks a little spammy if you're just putting keywords to try to get views I think it's like spam and the Instagram gets smarter about it and it kind of backfires so what I would say when you're posting I'm posting via the regular camera in the description write complete sentences and pepper them with hashtags <coughs> so that's don't fill your description only with hashtags. Filling the description only with hashtags looks like spam.
maybe what I would do better here, let's say I, I am selling, okay, Victor's Bakery, this, this cup here, we also sell coffee. So we, I could say something like, uh, wake up with a great cup of coffee. Hashtag morning. As I'm writing a hashtag, it's also going to mention other possible hashtags and the number of posts there. So if I jump on a hashtag that is very popular, I could get activity, but I could also get drowned out, just like we talked about with Google Plus communities. If I join a community of 10,000 people versus a community of 50,000 people, well, people are very active on the 50,000 one, and I could reach more people, but other people's content will then go on top of mine, and I might not be as visible. So here it's saying, okay, if you want the hashtag morning, you'll be in good company, and there's also morning motivation, and there's also morning sun and morning sky. So if it makes sense, you might select some of the suggestions or keep the one you're trying to do. I'll keep morning, and I'll also add morning motivation. Yeah, and the problem with that is that, you know, a person has to go out of their way to read more. Uh -huh. That's the point of that, to, to, to make it so that it creates a read more. Mm -hmm. And then uh, some people will do it, like, what else is there? Oh, just hashtags. Right. And other people will read it and do the read more. So it could have value, sure. Uh, it doesn't matter where it's at via search, because Instagram will find it, but making that extra space there is more for your current followers to hopefully entice them to read more. So you're are, so I you're saying comment the picture and then instead of putting a hashtag with the picture you comment on your own picture with hashtags. That's another way to do it too. I've done it that way as well. Uh, I, I don't know which is the more effective way so I'm kind of testing it myself also mm -hmm. but I, I think putting your main description and a few generous hashtags that, are, that apply, I think that will do be less work and it's still the same result, I think, because mm -hmm. you've got the hashtag attached yeah. to your, to your yeah, photo. Doing it, so mm -hmm. one more step to go back in. And yeah. So we can say um, number of hashtags uh, up to 30, but the most important the most important are the first 10. So I would not at all try to go up to the 30, up to the 20s, and all of that. I wouldn't really even go up to 10. If you have two or three hashtags that really define your photo, then use them. If you need to go up to 10, OK, but I wouldn't go past 10 because that's what the spammers do. They put 29 hashtags to try to reach every single person. And um, these networks are in a constant battle with these spammers to, to keep it legitimate. And if you follow the rules of legitimacy, it will benefit you. If uh, it makes sense, add a location purpose. So there's a there's a button right below my um, my photos right here, mm -hmm. location. It recognized because I let because I allowed locations earlier. It recognized I'm at a location of San Diego Continuing Education, or I'm in the general area of Eastern San Diego or the more general area of San Diego, California, or Sarah Mesa, and so forth. Or I can search. So I can attach a location to these photos. 
And that is, remember when we were in the search screen, we could search for uh, people and places. So if I've got my business on Main Street, and I've added myself to the map, I can attach my photos to my business on Main Street, and when people are searching, my location could show up when they search. Victor? Yes. If, if you're in Chula Vista and you're doing something for a client in um, England, you wouldn't want to put San Diego, right? In Chula Vista, right? No, that's why there's search right here. So then you can search London. So that's what you would do? If, mm -hmm. you, if this was for a client of yours, you would go ahead and add England? Yeah, or okay. more, even more specifically, a city and such. But yes, uh, there is the ability right there to search, to then attach. Now, would I do it? It would depend on the client. If the client has a value, gets a value out of a location, then yes. Okay, Victor's Bakery in London. I want people to visit Victor's Bakery in London, so I would attach a location mm -hmm. on a map. But if they're, you know, a plumber that travels to people's houses, I wouldn't really add a location because they're, it's mobile. It, it, it travels. Purpose adds photos to a map. So like if you're to get found. posting yes. a picture of a destination and it's just you don't care if people go there. Well, if someone's searching for a destination, then you might want to put like you know like India or something like that. You might put that. People are looking for pictures of India. Then yes. That would be a different reason to put. But that would be a hashtag, not a. Not a More likely, it would be a hashtag. Yeah. Yes, rather than location. Crisscross. Yeah, locations more usually are going to be more specific. Uh, you know, city, city at the biggest, I would say. Yeah. So adding the photo to the map. Below that, we have tag people, and uh, for you as the business, you might not have it, you might not think it's as valuable. On the opposite side, it is valuable. You want people to tag you, but that still comes from them choosing to tag you. If I'm doing tag people, what I would do is I would click that, and then I would say, okay, let's say, ideally, this is the this is a photo of a, of a group of people. So let's say I would tap the person. Let's say there's a person there, so I'm gonna tap there on the right. And then it, there's a person standing there so I'm tapping the person who is this so then I would type I would start typing the person's name and it would tag the person let's say uh, PMD interactive if you spell it right So I'm going to attach, I'm going to tag my company there, PMD Interactive, that they were in this photo. So PMD Interactive is part of this photo. I'm going to tap somewhere over here over also. I'm going to tap on the right side. Who's this? Well, that one is VMC Inc., this other company I work with. Great. VMC Inc. over here somewhere. Okay, actually, it's the VMC Inc. Well, there you it is. You could also do it by putting an at within the caption, couldn't you? You could, but here the purpose of this one is that when you're when you're tapping on a specific place on the so it's for individual identification. Yes, but also if it's people. You know, I tap on a particular person and I see that's the person, that's their account. If they're in this, just a description, you don't, you don't see the link between who's the person in, in the photo and who's their account. But if you put an at sign before, then it links to their profile. It does, but I, like I'm saying here, when the person is looking at the photo, they will see this little pointer pointing at the person saying, right. that's the person, that's their account. Okay. When it's in the description, yes, you, they will then have to click on the link to their profile and go view yeah. their profile. But here it's like right there. Not primarily if there were people in those pictures, right? Or if the photographer you wanted to identify the photographer of the picture, is that the way you might do it? Or yeah, they, there's a lot of purposes of why you, you put the person in the tag here. Uh, yeah. Physically, the person, or what's very popular, it is businesses. Like one of these clients that we have is a restaurant, mm -hmm. and they travel to a lot of food events. 
So the food event themselves is, t is sharing photos and they're tagging the business. So the physical business you know, is being tagged in the photo to give everyone attention that everyone is here, this is the business, go check out their business. Mm -hmm. So here I can easily tag, I don't think there's a limit, but I think there's at least, you can put 10, I don't think there's a limit, but great, I can, I can attach people. At the moment, Victor's Bakery is not connected to VMC Inc. or PMD Interactive, but I attach them. That's great. Is there any sort of abuse? Is there any sort of an idea for abuse here? Yes, you can put any person here. I can go here and I can tag, yeah, Justin Bieber is in my photo. Question? The, on a separate screen, I can't go back to it at the moment because I'm stuck here at the moment, but on a separate screen, remember there was a screen that said photos uh, tagged, photos with your tag. It was called something like that, photos where you were tagged. Mm -hmm. So that's a list of all of the photos where someone else has tagged me, and I can see them. No, it's not, it's not like Facebook where it's that intrusive. It's uh, the person right here, VMC Inc. and PMD Interactive would get a notification that they were tagged in my photo, but my photo would not go on their timeline. So let's say all of these tags, I put them on, but the abuse of it is that I can tag anyone here. This can be turned on or off, and you can block people. Why is this person tagging me in their photo? I don't know them. This is one technique where spammers could abuse the system. I'm trying to sell this product, and therefore I'm going to put a bunch of people's names in this tag as tags, not because they're in the photo, because I want them to know that I exist. They'll get a notification, Victor's Bakery tagged you in their photo. Well, why? And then I go click to view, and they're trying to sell me something. So from that point of view, a spammer could abuse, abuse it to get views. Mm -hmm. But you, obviously, are not spammers, and you're not going to abuse it. You're going to use it for real in that, yes, those that are in the photo know that they're in the photo there are those people in the photo I will tag them they will be alerted that they're in my photo it will not show up on their timeline but I'm letting them know they're in my photo so that maybe they'll f like it maybe they'll comment then maybe they'll follow maybe they'll buy Victor, yes um no that was what we talked about in um facebook because they're so linked together oh instagram doesn't have its own advertising the best way to use it really is via facebook okay. because you you use it on facebook to to boost and to advertise and then it goes over to your instagram also so you get a two for one from facebook over to to instagram <coughs> now for some reason here my uh, remote viewer shut down. I guess I reached the limit. Uh, let me see if I can turn it back on so we can keep seeing my screen. Okay, I guess I can launch it again. So let me get back to Instagram. So this is all still in the in the sharing screen. You see we can do a lot here and the very last thing is send it to the other networks. If you connect your, your Facebook account 
um, here it's going to ask me log into Facebook and again be careful depending on which account you're logging in with this could be this from Instagram could be sent to the wrong Facebook account if you've got a personal one and a business one you have to be careful that's why I think it's better to instead from Facebook share to Instagram to get it in both places I think from Instagram back to Facebook is often a little tricky because it assumes you're gonna share it back to your personal Facebook no I'm trying to send it to my business Facebook mm -hmm. So from Facebook to Instagram, I believe, is going to give you better results. So if you're buying an app, promoting a spot on Facebook, you When you set it up, yes. Yes. Uh, that's how it's worked. That's how I've seen it uh, work and for our clients. That yes, you can uh, set up the ad, buy the ad on Facebook, and if you choose and you set it up, it could go to your Instagram as well. Well, the ad would be the picture. Yeah, I know, but you can't, like, say I put a picture on Facebook, just a picture. It's not, I don't have the option, like, here, you have, here, in Instagram, if you put up a picture, you have the option to put it on Facebook, just by toggling that switch and signing into your account. But on Facebook, if I put a picture, just a picture, I'm not doing an ad, I'm just putting up a picture. Mm -hmm. The option does not exist, as far as I know, to have it automatically go to Yes. So that's it's just with ads that you're talking about. Pretty much with but ads. So you would probably have a picture, but you're creating an ad and a book, boosting that post, and then, then it will. Yeah, so you probably mean just a regular share versus an ad share. Right. Yeah, a regular share won't automatically go to Instagram. It'll right. just stay on Facebook. But then when you start to do ads and boosts and such, mm -hmm. yes, then that can go over to Instagram. So, pro tip. Um, create content on Facebook first, boost it, and then send it to Instagram. Because if you're going to be active, like I'm saying in these classes, if you're going to be active on these networks, you can save yourself a little effort by, by posting to Facebook and boosting that, you know, paying for that to reach more people. And then part of that is that it's going to go to Instagram. So you cover both Facebook and Instagram. If you don't do it this way, well, you have to go into Instagram, you upload the photo, it looks nice, and you've got to go over to Facebook and do it again. Especially if it's the same photo, the same ad, the same text, you, you did it twice. So instead, go to Facebook, set it up that way, and then it can go over to Instagram. I guess as a buffer, that's one of the where you are hoot suite where you can schedule things. Yeah, we did talk about that previously, oh, and okay. I do recommend I do rec recommend those because it does cut out that that uh, extra effort. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I often mention buffer. I like that one. I I haven't used hoot suite as much as I should, but I've just got so used to buffer that one lets you lets you do that too. Is that only online? I mean, only on, on your phone, and that's something you can do on, do on your PC. I usually do it on the PC because I, I like logging in and having a nice big screen to work with rather than the smaller phone. In that case, you would be doing your active post in, yeah, in Facebook and then having it go to Instagram. So you would yeah, be exactly. doing Instagram posts that way. Mm -hmm. Is it possible to oversaturate, like, with, I don't know, with posts? like? Yeah, and that's the danger of trying to, to do this. When I had the basic, intermediate, and advanced, you could over, over saturate people on, on daily. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of a that tightrope is difficult to, to walk sometimes, yeah. depends on your product. Uh, but some of these companies, some of these big companies, it, it works for them. Something new every single day depends on the audience. Some people might say it's too much, so then they, <coughs> then they unfollow. And exactly. some people like it, and then they keep coming back. You don't quite know until you try it. Mm -hmm. Well, and then the value of the new with Facebook, right? And I guess Instagram now too, right? Where, the, where you show up in the feed is related to. Uh, yeah, the, they're always changing their algorithm about what is going to show up and what's popular and what's hot, and it's all trade secrets and you don't really know. And earlier when we saw Maxine's photo, I think. Or, or one of those food photos it said it had been posted August 25th well in internet time that was a month and a half ago almost two months ago why is it still so popular because it was popular some part of the algorithm deemed it popular and it keeps showing up
so those are the trade secrets that we don't quite know but the more that we're active and try to follow their advice and such the more it works for us so let's say after all of this I'm going to finally share it so all my zero followers would see that but again in the beginning you are going to kind of talk to the void a little bit uh, eventually it'll answer back because uh, oh look at that I got a like I did, I did not script it it's probably a spam account but uh, when you see that number um, you know it looks nice oh people like my stuff so let's see this I didn't I didn't plan this obviously so I'm gonna click those likes so Sanjay GRG87 <laughs> liked your post. Maybe they're real, maybe they're not. Let's further see their account. Hopefully safe for work. Maybe there's somebody in here. Uh, Sanjay, you're here today? No, not here today. So um, <laughs> probably real. Is there anyone here? No? How could that happen so quickly? My hashtag. He saw my hashtag of morning motivation. And he seems to be athletic. So he wants morning motivation. You mean he follows that hashtag? Oh, you got another one, didn't you? Got another one. Yeah, you can follow the hashtag and keep up to date with it. Let's see who I got another one here. Loza Musical One. Might be more questionable. Let's check that that one. Yeah. Could be. Uh, well, I, I guess it's legit. It's pictures of her, right? So I guess that one's real also. So this is, it, I suppose to one degree, this is, they're following what I'm saying in this class. They are giving likes in hopes that I will give them back a like. They're probably trying to also promote something or just build that fleeting internet fame or whatever and they're giving out likes maybe even randomly without really caring that's not a great photo at all but no. they liked it <laughs> they yeah. liked it so they're trying to kind of blindly do what I'm saying here you'll do it s more smartly more smartlier you're going to do the likes and the follows and the comments they just went to that hashtag they liked the first few things they saw because I checked out their profile they did exactly what I'm saying that you want people to check out your profile uh, and so there I'm seeing that they liked my thing and I, at least I looked at their profile but I'm not gonna like anything back I'm not gonna follow it's not related to my business at all we're not even in the same country I guess <laughs> so it's like what's what's their value so um, yeah Russia and Musician. Mm -hmm. How do you follow a hashtag? Well, it is manually. You have to go back to the uh, the search and then search the hashtag and just keep up to date and refresh it. So that so that Sanjay guy was just then looking for that hashtag of morning motivation. Yeah, most likely. And and morning motivation had thousands of uh, results. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I appeared there and give it a like and moved on and like I said that's the lowest level you give a like and you move on what else is there so at that moment he happened to have seen my post and liked it and moved on the very last thing we'll look at is uh, what is this ominous you right here well this is stories this is yet another new way to share this is related to that 24-hour self-destructing thing this is a collection of photos or videos or animations whatever the things that you can create on Instagram grouped together in a story that disappears so that takes you back to that main special camera but what you're adding there is a story then when a person logs in to their account if they're following you it will say Victor's Bakery has a new story you sort of see it over here all of these are stories so San Diego uh, posted these things and I can see the, um, the various stories so let's say King James 
So he posted a simple animation. He's simply nodding his head over and over and over with some text. Mm -hmm. And you see there's a, there's a timer up on the top showing that it's going to happen for some amount of time. It's automatically going to go to the next one. So that's another thing. Video, very hard to see. And the next one. This is hard to watch. And so all of these are just passing along by like this, and this is a story. So your own story is the same sort of thing. It's photos, it's video, it's looping animation, 24 hours. And um, that's another way to kind of reach an audience. So for most of these things, it's about trying it. And if you've got a testing account like me, you can try it, make mistakes, delete it, and then do it for real on a real account. So you can further see more advice and how to use it and what's new and what's changed. Remember, we have socialmediaexaminer.com. Lots of Instagram tips. So as we wind down, again, there's still plenty to do, but I would really recommend there's your unofficial homework over the weekend. Use Instagram. Try those different buttons. Make mistakes. Don't worry about it. Just learn from it and actually do it. I'm going to put these notes in the folder in a moment, but any general questions on what we talked about today? Um, just one. Mm -hmm. Like last time I was here for Pinterest, you said for um, Victor's Bakery, you would have different boards, like for um, cupcakes and mm -hmm. breads and you know, these type of um, products. Yeah. So, so if you had, could you describe how that would work on Instagram? You don't really have that, unfortunately. You don't have that sort of organization. It's basically you post something and you post something and you post something. It's not really organized into boards like Pinterest. The closest organization is using stories, but then those disappear in 24 hours. So really there's, there's uh, not much organization. Um, how, for Victor's Bakery then, how would you use Instagram? Same thing, I'd keep sharing photos and pictures and videos and doing live broadcasts and fun photos with dog ears and just posting. That's one of the detriments, I think, that, ha that well, one of the positive things that Pinterest has is that organization. And most of the other networks don't quite have organization. That's one of its strong points. Google Plus has organization in communities, but not quite in Instagram. So you just keep active. That's why here you have these different levels of activity, because if people are following 10 accounts and everyone posts something every few days, that new stuff overtakes your stuff so you have to keep active here's something new for you to see because people forget about you quickly so it's just about being active yes how do we uh, delete the Instagram account somewhere in the settings let's see I'm gonna go over to settings the little person icon then the three dots icon on the top right and um, let's see Hmm. Account. I don't see it there, so you might have to look it up and um, let's see how to delete your Instagram top result. You have to request it to be deleted from their help system. When you delete your account, everything disappears. Great. After you delete your account, okay, how to delete it? Go to the delete your account page. So you have to do it on the website. You see what I did was I went online and I searched how to delete my Instagram. And eventually that takes you to a link over on Instagram. 
I'm going to put this link directly in the notes. I'm going to put the notes directly into the notes. I'm going to put it here. I'm going to put it here directly into the notes. Um, that's the answer. And then you follow the link, and then you can delete it from the website. All right, so next week, if you come back, we are going to talk about uh, YouTube. We're going to start a two-day lecture on YouTube. Next week, we're going to learn basic video editing. I'm going to bring you a video to work with, and I'm going to teach you a little bit about how to edit your video. Because then on, in two weeks, we're going to create a YouTube account, and we're actually going to upload our videos and talk about getting followers and all of that. But you can't do very much on YouTube without a video. So next week, we'll talk about video editing software, how to remove your mistake, how to add music, how to add text. We'll spend all day on that next week, and then in two weeks, we'll create the account. All of these notes that I've been writing, I'm putting them in the network folder. If you are new this week, let me show you where the network folder is, which is where my notes are, and the syllabus. So my syllabus has my email, and with my email, you can send me an email requesting the videos that I'm recording. So wherever you're at here, you can, you can get the network, you can go to the network folder,